want to get cheat sheets, audiobooks, lessons, apps, and much more every month for free? Just click the link in the description to get your free language gifts of the month. Welcome to SwahiliPod101.com's Kiswahili Kwa Dakika Tatu. The fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn Swahili. Hamjamboni, mimi ni Medina. Shukran kwa kuungana na mimi katika kipindi hii. Hi everybody, I'm Medina. Thank you for joining me. In this series, you're going to learn basic Swahili expressions. It's super easy and it only takes three minutes. And in this first lesson, you're going to learn how to introduce yourself in Swahili. You learn both an informal and formal way to do it. But unlike many other languages, there is not a very big difference between informal and formal speech in Swahili. First, let's see how Kenyan people introduce themselves in an informal situation. Habari, mimi ni Medina. Nina furaha kukutana na wewe. Hi, I'm Medina. Nice to meet you. Habari, mimi ni Medina. Nina furaha kukutana na wewe. Let's break it down. Start with the greeting. Habari, then mimi ni, which is followed by your name. Next, say the phrase, Nina furaha kukutana na wewe. Nice to meet you. All together, it is, Habari, mimi ni Medina. Nina furaha kukutana na wewe. And now, let's see the same sentence in formal speech. Shikamo, jina langu ni Medina Maraka. Nina furaha kukutana na wewe. Hello, my name is Medina Maraka. Nice to meet you. Shikamo, jina langu ni Medina Maraka. Nina furaha kukutana na wewe. So, what has changed from the previous introduction? Let's take a closer look at this together. It's important to note that habari can be used in both casual and formal settings. However, it is more formal and respectful to use the word shikamo, especially when addressing an older person. Shikamo implies good day or simply hello. You will notice that the section mimi ni for I am changes to jinalangu ni medina for my name is Medina. During a formal self-introduction, it is advisable to mention your last name. So, I will say, my name is Medina Maraka. Here, you will say your full name. Finally, Nina furaha kukutana na wewe is the same for both. This phrase means, nice to meet you. One more time. The informal way to introduce yourself in Swahili is, habari, mimi ni Medina. Nina furaha kukutana na wewe. And the formal way to introduce yourself is Shikamo, jina langu ni Medina Maraka. Nina furaha kukutana na wewe. Now, it's time for Medina's insights. When introducing yourself, it's a good habit to shake hands. Usually, the right hand is slightly supported by the left hand. If you're concerned about politeness, a slight bend forward while shaking the hand adds a sign of respect in the Kenyan business world. However, if you speak too formally, people will think you sound unnatural. In Kenya, simplicity is best. In the last lesson, we learned how to introduce ourselves in Swahili. In this lesson, we are going to learn how to use good manners when we thank people. Are you ready? Let's get started. There are several ways to thank someone, but let's start with the easiest. It's just one word, asante, asante. As you may have guessed, asante means thank you. When saying thank you very much, you just need to add the word sana, asante sana, asante sana. Sana means a lot. So asante sana is just like saying thank you very much. In the last lesson, we talked about the informal and formal ways of speaking Swahili, but Asante will work in both situations, so there's no need to worry. So how do you reply to thank you in Swahili? It's easy. 
there are two ways of doing it. The main way is to say, Karibu. This means, you're welcome. Karibu. Literally, this phrase means, welcome. The other way to say you're welcome is the expression, Kamwe. Kamwe. Literally, this phrase means, not at all, or never mind. You use this when you think that there's no need to be thanked. So it's like saying, don't mention it. So when someone says asante to you, you can simply reply with karibu or kamwe. Now, it's time for Medina's insights. If you're not sure about whether to use asante or asante sana, keeping it simple is always your safest bet. You don't have to worry about formal or informal situations. Asante can be used with just about anyone, anywhere, and at any time. In the last lesson, we learned how to thank people by saying Asante. In this lesson, we learned some of the most common greetings used in Kenya. Ukotayari, are you ready? Tuanze, so let's get started. The most commonly used informal greeting is Habari. Habari. Habari means hi or hello. We use it when we meet people. We can use this greeting with friends or relatives, but also with people we don't know. We used this phrase in lesson one. Do you remember? And do you remember what the formal way of greeting people is? Shikamo. Shikamo. Do you also remember that habari can be used both in formal and casual settings? During the evening, we say, Habari ya jioni. Habari ya jioni. Jioni is Swahili for evening. So, habari ya jioni means good evening. Habari and habari ya jioni are used when we meet someone, but when we leave, we don't say these greetings again. Instead, when living in both formal and informal situations, Kenyan people say, kwaheri. Kwaheri. Kwaheri means goodbye. Finally, in Swahili, we have an expression meaning See you soon, that can be considered both formal and informal. Tuonane tena. Tuonane tena. Now you can greet people in many different ways in Swahili. Let's review them all again. When greeting someone in an informal way, remember to say, Habari. When greeting someone in a formal situation, you say, Shikamo. When living in either a formal or informal situation, say, Tuonane tena. It's easy, isn't it? Now, it's time for Medina's insights. In formal situations, Kenyans commonly greet each other by shaking hands. But if we meet someone we are very friendly with, we hug each other. Don't be afraid to do it with your Kenyan friends. It's normal. In the last lesson, we learned the most common forms of greetings in Swahili. Do you remember habari as an informal way of greeting someone? and shikamo, the formal version? In this lesson, you're going to learn a very useful phrase. Do you speak English? If you find yourself in a situation where you need assistance in English, this phrase can be a lifesaver. And because you're asking it in Swahili, you can be sure that everyone will understand what you're saying, even if their answer is no. Here's the informal way to say it. Unaongea kingereza? Unaongea Kingereza. In Swahili, we sometimes use a one-word phrase that combines the subject and its verb. Unonge is a good example. Breaking this phrase down further, we have u, which is a pronoun for the subject. Na shows the subject's potential of doing an action. It makes the statement affirmative. Onge is the verb for speak. Together, we have unongea, which literally means you speak. Saying it with a higher intonation makes it a question. So, unongea means, do you speak? Adding kingereza, the word for English, will make it unongea kingereza. This means, do you speak English? All together we have, unongea kingereza. Unongea kingereza. To learn how to properly construct one word sentences, Check out our obsolete beginner series at swahilipod101.com. 
There, you'll find several detailed grammar lessons. We are now going to make this sentence formal. It isn't hard. First, add the word J at the beginning of the sentence. J is a word that prompts a question. The sentence, unaongea, will change to J, unaweza ongea. Not the extra word weza, which means able. J unaweza ongea therefore means, are you able to? Let's look at the full sentence. J unaweza ongea kingereza. Do you speak English? J unaweza ongea kingereza. Adding samahani, which means excuse me, makes the sentence even more polite. Samahani, unaweza ongea kingereza. The responses you'll receive could be one of these three. Ndiyo. Yes. Ndiyo. Kidogo. A little. Kidogo. La, siongei kingereza. No, I don't speak English. La, siongei kingereza. Since la siongei kingereza is a negative statement, we need to say la first, followed by si before the verb, and an e at the end of the verb. Also note that the verb ongei is slightly different from ongei. This is because negating in Swahili depends on the pronoun and the tense. In this example, the first person prefix C is used before the verb and the suffix E is used at the end of the verb. As you can see, negation in Swahili follows a particular pattern. Some negations though require the word no, but we will talk about this in a later lesson. Now it's time for Medina's insights. For those of you who speak languages other than English, this question still works. Just substitute Kingereza with a different language. Here are some examples. Kitalia is Italian. Kirusi is Russian. Kispania is Spanish. And Kijerumani is German. In this lesson, we mentioned the expression Samahani, but did you know that this can also be used as an apology? We'll be learning this in the next lesson as well as other ways to apologize in Swahili. It's never too late to show your good manners to Kenyans. So, I'll see you in our next Kiswahili kwa dakika tatu. See you next time. Want to get cheat sheets, audiobooks, lessons, apps, and much more every month for free? Just click the link in the description to get your free language gifts of the month. Hamjamboni, mimi ni Medina. Hi everybody. I'm Medina. Welcome to SwahiliPod101.com, Kiswahili kwa dakika tatu, the fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn Swahili. In the last lesson, we learned the phrase, unaweza ongea kingereza? Do you speak English? We also mentioned the word samahani, which means excuse me in Swahili. In this lesson, we are going to learn how to use samahani and other words when apologizing in Swahili. We should use samahani in formal situations such as when we are ordering something in bars or restaurants. For example, Samahani, naweza giza kikombe cha kahawa? Excuse me, would I order a cup of coffee? We can also use it when asking a question. For example, Samahani, Mombasa iko wapi? Excuse me, where is Mombasa? Sometimes, we also hear people say just Samahani because it can also be used to draw someone's attention. Samahani. Samahani can be used in formal and informal situations. We can use Samahani when asking a question or when apologizing. All of these phrases can be used for either excuse me or I am sorry. But if you really want to apologize for something, it might be better to use a different phrase. That phrase is niwi eradi. It means pardon me and can be used in both formal and informal situations. Niwi eradi. First, we have the Swahili word niwie, which means a consideration. Then, radhi, meaning pardon. Together, it literally means consider a pardon. But you can think of it like, pardon me. Niwie radhi. Niwie radhi. Now, it's time for Medina's insights. Please, remember when you're in Kenya, if you accidentally bump into someone, it's more common to say samahani than niwie radhi. This lesson will be all about nambari. That's right, that means numbers. First, we'll learn the numbers from one to 10. They're not difficult at all. And this lesson will only take three minutes. Kwa dakika tatu, two. 
Are you ready? Let's start. Moja. Moja. Mbili. Mbili. Tatu. Tatu. Nne. Nne. Tano. Tano. Sita. Sita. Saba. Saba. Nane. Nane. Tisa. Tisa. Kumi. Kumi. Okay, now repeat after me. I'll say the numbers and give you time to repeat each one. Moja. Mbili. Tatu. Nne. Tano. Sita. Saba. Nane. Tisa. Kumi. Great job! If you're wondering what comes before moja, namely zero, it is sufuri in Swahili. Sufuri. It's quite easy to remember, right? Now, there's no need to panic if your new Kenyan friend asks for your cell phone number. Let's practice how you'll say it. We'll use the phrase, Nambari yangu ni, which means, my number is, Nambari yangu ni. Sufuri, saba, mbili, tatu, nne, nane, saba, tisa, sita, tano. Can you read it by yourself? Sufuri, saba, mbili, tatu, nne, nane, saba, tisa, sita, tano. Perfect. Now, it's time for Medina's insights. Kenyans consistently pronounce these numbers as they appear. So, it's easy to master them. These numbers are used to name other bigger numbers. So, this saves you the energy of having to start over again. Keep at it, because the advantages of mastering these first 10 numbers will become clear as we continue our lessons. In the last lesson, we learned the numbers 1 to 10. Do you still remember? Let's go through them once more. Moja. Mbili. Tatu. Nne. Tano, sita, saba, nane, tisa, kumi. And now, let's continue from 11. Kumi na moja. Kumi na moja. Kumi na mbili. Kumi na mbili. Kumi na tatu. Kumi na tatu. Kumi na nne. Kumi na nne. Kumi na tano. Kumi na tano. Kumi na sita. Kumi na sita. Kumi na saba. Kumi na saba. Kumi na nane. Kumi na nane. Kumi na tisa. Kumi na tisa. Okay, now repeat after me. I'll say the numbers and give you time to repeat each one. Kumi na moja. Kumi na mbili. Kumi na tatu. Kumi na nne. Kumi na tano. Kumi na sita. Kumi na saba. Kumi na nane. Kumi na tisa. These numbers might seem long and a little difficult, but the idea is actually very simple. Just take kumi and add any one of the numbers between 0 and 10 that you learned in the previous lesson. Let's take a look at 11. Kumi na moja. Kumi is 10. Join it with moja, 1, using na. Together we have kumi na moja. 
kumi na moja. You can do the same with other numbers. Now, do you realize the advantage of mastering the first numbers you learned in the previous lesson? Moving on. 20 and other multiples of 10 take different names. Let's go through them. Ishirini. Ishirini. Thelathini. Thelathini. Arobaini. Arobaini. Hamsini. Hamsini. Sitini. Sitini. Sabini. Sabini. Themanini. Themanini. Tisini. Tisini. And lastly, Mia Moja. Mia Moja. All these numbers take a ni at the end, except for Mia, meaning hundred. This is an easy way to remember these numbers. The last thing to learn in this lesson is how to form compound numbers above 20. This is also super easy. Take the tens and simply add the numbers you learned in the first lesson. Let's try it out. How would you say 38 in Swahili? Let's take it step by step. 30 is telathini and then add 8, nane. In between telathini and nane is the conjunction na, meaning and, to join them. Telathini na nane. It's as simple as that. Let's try another one, like 72. First, take 70, sabini, and then add 2, bili, to get sabini na bili. Now, it's time for Medina's insights. When you want to come beyond 100, you can use the same basic logic as with the numbers above 10. Just add the word mia moja, 100, in front of the tens. For example, 167 is mia moja sitini na saba. Mia moja sitini na saba. The next time you have trouble sleeping, try counting sheep in Swahili and see how far you can get. Would you like to go on a shopping trip in Kenya? In the next lesson, we'll get to practice the numbers by talking about prizes. In the last lesson, we learned how to count in Swahili. Can you remember the numbers from moja to mia moja? I hope so, because this time, you will put them into use. We will be practicing how to go shopping in Kenya. Before we start, you need to know how to say, how much is this? Hi ni pesangapi? Hi ni pesangapi? Okay, are you ready? Let's go. Imagine you're in a shop in Kenya. You find something you want to buy and you want to ask how much it costs. Start by saying, Samahani. Do you remember what this means? Excuse me. Samahani, hi ni pesangapi? Samahani, hi ni pesangapi? The clerk will tell you, ni shilingi? It costs, or more simply, they'll say the amount directly. For example, Ishirini Natano. What number is Ishirini Natano? Can you work it out? It's 25. So this phrase means it cost 25 shillings. Let's look at some more examples. Say, you see a bag that you want to buy. A bag in Swahili is beggy. So how would you ask how much it costs? Samahani, begi hii ni pesangapi? Or a pair of shoes. This makes it slightly different because you have to use the plural form. A shoe will be kiatu, but the plural for shoes is viatu. So you would ask the following question. Samahani, viatu hivi ni pesangapi? This simply means, how much are these shoes? Now, it's time for Medina's insights. Credit and debit cards are not commonly used in Kenya, but you can double check by asking the following question. Now, is a lipa kwa kadi ya credit? Can I pay by credit card? Now, where's a lipa kwa kadi ya credit? Do you feel confident about counting shillings? If you don't, don't worry. We'll learn all about it next time. I'll be waiting for you 
in the next Kiswahili kwa dakika tatu lesson. Tuonane!